Hello, my name is James. This is the Fala Sci-Fi Fantasy Horror Podcast. Today I'm joined by two guests. Could you please introduce yourselves? Hey, I'm James. I'm back. Uh, I am Zephyr. This is my uh, first time here. Yay. <laughs> Thank you both so much for being here. Uh, today, in the spirit of Halloween, I would like to talk about one of the horror genres. It actually doesn't exist yet. Uh, it's a made-up genre that I created because I think that there are a number of stories that would fall under this sort of... Umbrella? They, sorry? Umbrella? Yeah. Um, they all kind of use like this this like like the juxt the juxtaposition of like happy elements and horror elements um mm -hmm. and i've done lo lots of research i've found comedic horror camp horror folk horror festive horror none of them would really uh this genre i'm deciding to call clown horror um so it by stephen king is probably the best example i can think of um I mean, the 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 villain of it, uh, Pennywise, takes the form of a clown, something that's supposed to, that's supposed to be happy. Uh, so that's really the main reason why it is clown horror. But I think it's also clown horror because, uh, you know, it's summer vacation and like the kids are like supposed to be having fun and it's supposed to be like. You know this fun time but it isn't because they have to deal with this thing so clown horror does not need to include clowns i think mm -hmm. a clown is something that is supposed to be happy but that it it's actually one of the uh, most common uh phobias yes yeah uh so that's why i'm deciding to call it clown horror so would you say something along the lines of stranger things fits into this the first season, no. Um, the second season, there's like the Halloween episode, but I think it needs to stretch over the whole thing. Um, yeah, but I the third season. The, yeah, the third yeah. season, you know, they're at a carnival and whatnot, and yes. it's like, oh, yeah, there's this giant, you know, monster of, uh, you know, flesh and whatnot, and like... It, it's all during like a carnival, a fun event, which I mean, relating to clown horror, you you often see clowns in and whatnot. So it's like, ooh, you know. Yes. But spoiler to spoiler to <laughs> <laughs> The fourth season is as well because it's supposed to be like the spring break. Yeah. Yeah. So, Zephyr, you are really passionate about horror. Uh, yeah. I am. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I have been into the horror genre, actually, since before I was born, um, my mom always makes a joke that, uh, because the night before I was born, she was watching, um, The Hills Have Eyes, that that's why I'm so into horror <laughs> and whatnot, but, uh, it's funny because my dad doesn't really like horror while my mom is a giant scaredy cat of horror, so, uh, I just kind of came out and was like, eh, I'll take, I'll take the spot of, uh, the one who really enjoys it and whatnot. I, I have zero experience <laughs> when it comes to this sort of thing like i've had a few things ambience mood but like most of the media i consume does not fall under this sort of sense uh -huh. of any sort of horror hmm. so it was kind of hard to find people for this podcast i think horror a lot of people will stay away from it mm -hmm. um and e e even for me I only recently uh, started enjoying the horror genre. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that so many people don't like horror? All right. Easily, from my perspective at least, <clears throat> I am i don't think of myself as a scaredy cat exactly, but I'm not too far off from it. I definitely, like, I can be spooked, but not enough to leave. For, like, most people also kind of off my experience, I think a lot of people take it only for the horror element and then find it boring. I think a lot mm -hmm. of stories, yeah. a lot of horror stories aren't just the, uh, here's Johnny, yeah. but are instead, like, the build-up, the place, this, there's a lot more going on 
to the story than just the scary bit, but people will fix it on the scary and be like, I'm watching this for horror. Well, why are we on winter vacation? Why is it nice out? What? Are you, mm-hmm. I want to be scared, damn it. Uh, actually, relating to um, The Shining, like, even then, like, yeah, there's the whole here's Johnny bit, but it's also kind of diving a little bit more into, like, psychological bits. It's not yes. exclusively psychological horror. Like, that's not the point of the movie, but it does, like, show a lot of that psychological aspect, which I think is also, like, kind of like you said, uh, why a lot of people don't really like horror is they don't like to think too hard into it. Or some people don't like to be scared. Or things like splatter horror can be too gory for them. Um or just, yeah, they don't like the anxiety that it can give them. There's a lot of different reasons people cannot enjoy horror, and those same reasons can be the exact same reasons why people do enjoy horror. Like, for me, I do like, I really like psychological horror because of that fear it gives me, because for me, I'm not scared very easily, but psychological horror manages to get right under my skin. Yeah, and it's interesting because the original Shining book by Stephen King focuses a lot more on like the psychological mm-hmm. aspects um and the film really focuses more on like the the, the film feels much more like a slasher film it, 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 it isn't but it it focuses more a lot of on tropes. that yeah. yeah um i also think that a lot of people they have like these assumptions about the horror genre i mean a lot of slasher films follow the same really predictable formula um and even before i sort of got into horror i i was actually one of those people who would do that um but this genre clown horror it it also has this this other element again it's Mm -hmm. like the happy side of things Mm -hmm. do you think that that would you know do you think the genre would appeal to people who aren't as into horror? Um. Ooh, well, hmm, hmm. I think you have this bit where I think some people would be more tainted like that than, like, I know it is already fear of clowns is a big thing, but trying to take these very positive, happy things and taint them. I don't, I don't know if people would as much be into it when it comes to movies and things, because I think you're running into that thing of people don't want to go say something and have it vividly like, oh, this is a happy thing and have it ruined for them. I know that's not mm-hmm. going to be everyone. I think some people, but like books and stuff, I could actually see people liking that more for the basis that like relatability, if you will, be able to attach to a character, a place or a feeling. And then, oh, Here's the rest of the story. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like it kind of depends on, like, yeah, the person. Some people might be a little bit more like, oh, well, I don't want something I enjoy, you know, ruined for me. There's a lot of movies that, like, revolve around clowns, like, you know, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, clowns is a horror movie literally about clowns in case uh, the thing wasn't obvious. Uh, 31, Terrifier. There's a lot of movies that do involve clowns and often play off of people's fear of clowns as it is. Um, people like, uh, from Mexican and Latino culture, uh, often actually really enjoy clowns. Like that is the exact opposite effect for them. So those movies, I mean, from my personal experience, either way, like kind of avoid it, but, uh, like, you know, they, they, uh, they would more likely enjoy that kind of clown just from seeing it because clowns are, clowns are fun most times, except for obviously when they're, uh, in horror where it's a little bit different kind of fun for uh for them you know like you were saying though with clown horror it's not just exclusive to clowns it can be something like you know a fair ride or like would a would a preschool count as like clown horror because that's like generally a fun happy place so all right yeah in that case it would be like you know you don't want to you don't want to look at your kid and be like ah my kid's haunted <laughs> you know like that that would just be extremely awkward after watching like a horror movie for me sometimes i get those like anxieties after like a really good one where it's like it's still lingering in my mind and i look at my dog like eh, don't kill me man <laughs> we talking the thing here <laughs> he's a small little dog and sometimes his eyes his eyes be looking a little bit too weird man you know <laughs> Yeah, well, that's interesting because I would say 
that the clown horror genre, the whole idea of making something that a lot of people really enjoy, and like turning it on its head, making it really scary. I mean, for me, Nightmare Before Christmas, mm-hmm. I think that's one. Um, it, it doesn't scare me that much now, but when I was younger, especially the part where they kidnap Santa Claus, that mm-hmm. part um, really scared me. For me, it was the exact opposite. Like, I think uh, that was the second Halloween movie I watched, and I really enjoyed it. But, like, Hmm. you know, I had a friend whose younger sister was, like, absolutely... Like, I had a Nightmare Before Christmas-themed backpack, and she was absolutely terrified of it. And I was like, oh, you're seven. (laughs) My backpack is far less likely to be haunted than you. Um, Would you say that the clown horror genre... Would appeal more to a younger audience. Well, uh, oh, sorry, you go. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be having it with little children, but yeah, I feel like it would more be towards that teen audience. I think. I mean, hmm. yeah, like you know, I got introduced to the horror genre pretty early on. I would say. You know, some it would really depend on how it looks and how it's marketed because it can be like really deceiving looking and then it's just like a little kid goes to watch it and they're gonna be traumatized by like clowns and whatever. Which um I feel like it wouldn't really appeal to much younger audiences because of the clowns and like because of that joyful thing, because it's like, yeah, they're kids and they're gonna be around that and they just watch a horror movie about it and it's like, ooh, you know, a little spooky. But yeah, I don't know. I don't have enough experience. Well, I'm not an adult, so obviously <laughs> I don't have experience in that room realm. But just going off of what family reads, I feel like it would be something that applies more towards younger range of audiences. Mm-hmm. More, I don't know, 15 to 30s sort of mm-hmm. deal. I can't, from what my grandparents read, I can't see them reading or consuming content of this vein. At least, not most people, but who knows. I feel like that's general, though, for, like, horror. It's like, yeah, you know, I would say, like, 13 to to 30 is, like, generally, like, a sweet spot for horror and, like, their main audience and whatnot. After that, it's, like, a little bit more iffy. You know, I feel like I've never met a 40-year-old who's, like, super into horror but I have met a 36-year-old, so getting a little close, but, like, not 40. Um, I realize that there are a lot of films that would, uh, not just films, a lot of stories that would fall under this genre. Um, maybe possibly the majority of horror. Um, uh, do you think that the genre would, would still be necessary? Do you think there's still a purpose in creating it um i don't know Hmm. i am unfamiliar with the genre enough to not i'm unfamiliar enough with the genre to not know what content would or would not fall under this umbrella but as far as the genre goes it does make total sense People would, uh, like, I think it'd be misunderstood, but it does make sense as a genre, and I can completely get the sense of, oh, here's something that is meant to be joyful, something that's positive, cool, we're gonna flip that on its head into a nightmare. Yeah, I feel like while it is, like, very common for stories, like, you know, you hear a bunch of, like, even, even things such as musicals, like, can play on that a lot, which is, like, very very end of the spectrum of uh, what horror is like you know meant to be and whatnot but i feel like there is still like that kind of point like to it where it's like not every hor- like it's not like you're covering the entire horror genre it's just we're get like like you were saying you know flipping something on its head to make it like joyful and like into something a little bit darker and a little bit stranger peculiar whatever is scary you know. So, yeah, I think there's probably wiggle room for the genre to exist. Mm. I think it'd need to have more, like, name brand content under its belt than mm. just it. But, or like you were saying with um, Stranger Things Season 4, 
cool be like yeah no that totally fits under this umbrella and mm-hmm. really sell that yeah i think it could exist i think that is totally plausible mm-hmm. yeah um another thing is as well it's like you know i feel like a lot of people myself included really do like when it's like here's something really nice and positive and then yeah they twist it and one what, whatnot i'm personally a real big fan of that um and i'm sure many other people are kind of like chucky is one of the the biggest ones where it's like you know dolls annabelle all that it's like yeah dolls are kind of like that i have a fear of dolls and like that that plays perfectly on it where it's like it's not just a fear of clowns and it's like a lot of joyful kitty things can actually be very scary so easily and like movies like it annabelle chucky all that like do it pretty nicely yeah yeah and you know i'm i'm thinking you know what genre does exist the paranormal horror supernatural horror genre Mm -hmm. and that has probably as many stories under it that clown horror would Um, yeah i feel like that's like basically all of horror is like aside from like the horror um movies such as like you know, like, splatter horror, most times, mm-hmm. like, Saw is, like, an example of splatter horror, or, like, Hostel. Um, but along with, like, movies, like, found footage, uh, very rarely are paranormal, like, they're more based off of real life, like, uh, Creep is a one that I really like, where it's, it's very realistic, but other than that, like, a lot of horror revolves around something supernatural, like, even Halloween it goes into it a little like michael myers is like basically invincible he's considered like you know kind of a epitome of darkness and it's like uh that that's a little bit paranormal to me a little bit demonic like whatever they also do a lot of demonic stuff and uh horror which yeah, yeah that that's paranormal at that point although i mean although the halloween franchise never end we may never live to see it <laughs> I mean, uh, supposedly, the next movie coming out is supposed to be... Actually, no, it already is out. I lied. It already I, is. I don't buy it. We're going we're gonna to get a Halloween Returns <laughs> next fall. You just wait. But... It's, a, it's a very easy money-making franchise. It's very popular. I don't care. I still love it. It's one of my favorite horror movies for how cheesy it is. Um, To end, what clown horror stories would you recommend well i mean like i said i don't have too much experience in this field but as was earlier mentioned Stranger things season four summer three uh i definitely recommend watching the first two seasons before that uh that's how tv series tend to work but i think those are probably my recommendation but you're the you're the fan so unfortunately, I can't remember the name of the movie right now. Um, I watched it on Netflix. Oh, never mind. I remember the name. It's called uh, Before I Wake. I would say that plays pretty well into the kind of clown genre theme that you're saying, um, mostly because it features a lot of things like butterflies repeatedly before turning them into moths, which a lot of people might like. A lot of people think that moths are cute, especially nowadays. Um, and <laughs> I mean, they're they're fuzzy, you know. Like they they, I can see why people like don't like them, but a lot of people also think that they're cute. Mm. But um, it's literally about like a little boy and whatnot, and like you know that's considered fun. And like there's even a Christmas tree, and there's a bunch of butterflies, all that. But uh, yeah, it it gets very dark very quickly. It's one of my favorite uh, movies. It's definitely, what kind of triggered like me getting super into horror um obviously it is like a really popular one for people who are still newer to horror just kind of want something like light you know more surface level um other than that i can't really think of too many that i would like recommend or that i can think of off the top of my head that would fit into uh clown horror all right well thank you for having us this is such a treat to be part of and hope to see you again in the near future i i got to rant about horror so i i'm perfectly happy with this and uh yeah i hope uh i hope to do this again yeah thank you both so much yep yeah have a good one